Hey guys, this is Dan with Gears and Gadgets. Thanks for tuning in back with another video a day. Till this channel hits 100K, we're pushing 100 videos, which is crazy. Now, I have a video on the channel right now that a lot of you guys are probably here for. It's gone pretty viral for the size of my channel, to say the least. And that is this plastic upper control arm from Ram Trucks. This thing has gotten so much attention. I've done enough lift kits and suspension upgrades on my trucks over the years. I have handled many upper control arms and I'm still not entirely sure how I feel about this. My whole goal when doing this video series was to be a little bit more analytical than uh, emotional when it came to a lot of these, these opinions. I did this back when I heard a lot of rumblings of Ruroc helmets being absolute trash. I bought one and cut it in half to see what was going on. To me, this is as a YouTuber putting my money where my mouth is and trying to inform or come up with a, an informed opinion. But sometimes my opinion is like, I don't know. I can tell you right now, looking at this, I don't love it. Um, it's certainly a part that I would not choose if I was given the option to build my truck from the ground up. The comments are all over the map. It's either absolute hate and disgust for this, a few engineers defending it, others saying that it's basically a crumple zone now for the trucks and that it's not sufficient. And I am confident enough to say that I don't know what I don't know. One thing that really caught my attention was how good is this upper control arm in a collision? But then I also thought, well, wait a minute, maybe you don't want a super rigid upper control arm, bear with me. In a front or side impact, mostly frontal side impact, when your wheel gets hit, if all of this stuff stays rigid, your wheel ends up coming into the driver. Basically the driver can get crushed by the wheel coming into the cabin. So I thought, I wonder what the IIHS crash rating videos look like between a Dodge or sorry, a Ram 1500 and say a Chevy Silverado and a Ford F-150, basically the most sold vehicles, trucks, at least in the US. So today we are going to take a look at that and see how much different do these upper control arms handle a front impact collision. Let's find out. This right here is an upper control arm for a GMC Sierra. This is what I just pulled off of my truck when I upgraded my whole front end suspension. And that's what most of us are used to seeing. Now, when you go over to a Ford F-150, 21 to 25, kind of the same construction. So Ram is really a trailblazer when it comes to whatever this nonsense is of having a hollow steel tube with a plastic injection molded part that is also encasing the ball joint. It's a completely different scenario. So before we look at the footage, let's just take a look real quick and see. Small front overlap, good. Moderate overlap, good. Let's go and take a look over at the Silverado. Small overlap front is only marginal with a moderate overlap, good. The F-150, small overlap front, good. Overlap front original test, good. Let's take a look at these videos and see how do these things perform. Okay, that's interesting. So if you look here with the 2019 Ram, which these would be on, you can see the front wheel, not only does the wheel actually completely crumble, but it definitely has a separation from what it looks like from the upper control arm. And again, I don't know if that's bad. In my opinion, you probably would prefer that because you don't want that coming into the cabin, but you could also argue that you don't want any of your suspension parts coming apart when you crash because you want to maintain control. But in an accident like that, you are not maintaining control no matter how much the front end stays together. Um, the whole vehicle is pretty much disabled at that point. So when you have a collision like that, at that point, you want everything to crumple, not stay together. Otherwise, you're in some serious trouble. This is the, I think, updated test. There you go. That whole wheel came off. Definitely a whole separation there from that control arm. But again, do you want a, a fuse being a suspension component that 
if it fails while driving, this same thing happens where basically the front wheel just it turns into a wet, limp noodle. How does the Silverado hold up? Jeez. That all looks like it all tore apart too, but the wheel actually turned sideways and prevented that from coming into the cab. Let's see the F-150. The F-150 stayed all intact. You can tell that that upper control arm is still holding that tire straight up and down. I don't know, I think there is enough structure in these things to not need a fuse per se in a suspension component, or at least there should be that that's not the issue. But it does make me question, like, is that part of their decision-making criteria? Because one thing that I had mentioned when I saw this, I really critiqued the fact that they mentioned that it's lighter and that lightweight saves fuel or whatever the case may be, adds payload back to your vehicle. But my real, I guess, calling BS on that is that if it saves a quarter of an MPG, that's really not benefiting me to have a potentially weaker component, whereas it's actually benefiting them when it comes to cafe MPG standards, things like that. But also, is it helping them get a better safety rating with a crash test. And this is where engineering becomes kind of like a really interesting peeling back the onion, so to speak, conversation because these decisions are being made, it could be to cut costs. That benefits them, it doesn't benefit you. They don't really ever drop the price of the truck because they saved a buck on some parts that goes to line the pockets of Wall Street more than it does Main Street. But, that's one component. Yeah, sure, it might save them a, a quarter of a MPG on overall gas mileage, but it also might get them a better, higher rated safety score, and then they can turn around and market it to you. IIHS safety rated best truck in America. Well, now we have something to market with, but maybe that means that you have a less reliable vehicle down the road. From an engineering standpoint, is it fine? Probably, maybe. I don't know. I'm sure they have enough engineering done on this thing to justify their decisions, but all these manufacturers had that same mindset when they went with Takata airbags. It, it, there's, there's a lot of opinions back and forth. And, and again, my goal was just to provide actual information to the conversation. And I see a lot of people, the overwhelming majority, do not like what they see when it comes to this upper control arm. And, I'm okay with that. I don't love it either, but I'm not willing to basically write this whole thing off as an engineering failure because maybe the testing says that it's okay. I would love to see somebody like Engineering Explained, uh, maybe the hydraulic press channel, which I saw someone mention in the comments, somebody with a little bit more of an engineering, automotive engineering background. It'd be really cool to see Sandy Monroe talk about this part, not from it, it and it's cheaper because a lot of times he is very much into the lean manufacturing mindset, um, but I would love to see somebody who isn't from RAM, who has a actual engineering background, not just an automotive mechanic who's going to share the same opinion that I have of holding this thing in their hands going, don't love it. Drop a comment down below. What do you guys think? Is this something that the internet is just latching onto because that's what the internet does? Or is it like a real legitimate consumers are angry that they're getting this kind of product when they want, I guess, more, especially with the way that, you know, the price of these trucks. The conversation around trucks is getting really uh, passionate based on a lot more emotion than it is uh, justified, I think. I don't want to say not justified, but educated. It's, it, it's certainly more emotional than it is educated with... I might say good reason, I don't know. It's just, the whole thing has me very conflicted, but I think we're at a point now where because trucks are so expensive, whether or not it's inflation, wages, whatever the conversation is, because people feel trucks are too expensive, this kind of nonsense on the heels of decades of a lot more nonsense in the automotive industry that um, I think people are just getting really rightfully so kind of annoyed by things like this that like, hey, we didn't ask for that. Who is that really for? So it's like a really good healthy dose of skepticism. I don't know. Let me know in the comments down below. What do you guys think? If anybody works for 
say like an aftermarket upper control arm company, uh, an engineer firm or works for one of these manufacturers and wants to remain anonymous, I would love to hear from somebody about this and have a deeper dive conversation with uh, somebody more, I guess, uh, intellectual than myself. So with that said, thank you guys very much for tuning in. If this is your first time tuning in, please hit that subscribe button down below. Remember, likes go a long way to help support the channel. I will see you guys next time.